Oh, we're hyped up. These are the games we're looking for all year, and we just can't wait to go. Danix in the gun. He's going to drop back. He's going to take a shot over the middle, and it's wow. caught by Jeff Stolzenberg in the corner of the end zone for a North Central touchdown. It always is a lot of talking back and forth. This is one of our biggest rivals, so, I mean, it's going to be a really physical game. Hand off to Kukoc at the middle. He bounces to the outside, goes to the pylon. Touchdown, North Central. Live from Benedetti Worley Stadium, it's time for your Cardinal Countdown pregame show right here on WONC Sports. It's homecoming here at Benedetti Worley Stadium. We are live under the scoreboard here, and this is your Cardinal Countdown pregame show with Russ Tanzillo and Bobby Tenzar. I'm Jeremy Rushing, taking you right up until about 30 minutes to kick off, where we will head back to the FM 89 studio for your Cardinal pregame live. But until then, we got a lot to talk about. Let's get right down to it, guys. Last week against Carthage, North Central improved to 6-1 and overall, 4-0 and in CCIW play, beating Carthage 42-10. to But the offense was a little scary. They, got, they had some trouble at first. They were held scoreless in that first quarter, had a hard time getting going. Uh, here's a clip with Coach Thorne about that slow start. So it took us a little while to adjust to the speed of the game and how hard they were going to play, how hard we needed to play. And once that happened, then our offense, uh, you know, put up 42 points. Now, Russ, going over to you, why did the offense have such a slow start in this ballgame? You know, traditionally for this past year of Cardinal football, they haven't gained off to a slow start almost every single game. Uh, I know I think it's just a lot of players on this Cardinal offense is his first year or second year starting overall. And I think it's just a lot of nerves. So it's going to take them a couple minutes to get their feet underneath themselves and kind of get rolling with the offensive side of the ball. But once they get rolling, Jeremy, I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty easy that – they can roll no matter what, where they go. They can always score points and run the ball. I think it's safe to say they're playing a much better team today in Illinois Wesleyan. Bobby, they can't afford a slow start in this one. What do they have to do today to avoid that slow start? Well, Jeremy, my first answer is pretty simple, guys. You got to establish some early momentum. When you have a great homecoming game at, at home against Illinois Wesleyan, that's going to be the key is establishing establishing some momentum. My second point will be, I think they got to get Stanek going. They're known for their run. Obviously, with uh, Tassio and Kukoc average, or having 10-plus touchdowns so far in the season. But this is an Illinois Wesleyan defense that gives up on an average of 2.8 yards per carry and has only given up four rushing touchdowns on the year. I think they have to establish a pass game, and they got to get to their the rookie quarterback, which is Hook, coming in for in Illinois, Illinois Wesleyan. All right, we're going to bring it over to Alex Perella here. Alex, unfortunately, not playing in this ball game due to a yeah. leg injury. But let's go over to the other side of the ball, on the defensive side of the ball where you play. What makes this defense so effective? Yeah, um, I think first off would be the coaching staff and the system that they have in place. Um, but the one thing I would say we do different is sprint to the ball every play. And one of our goals is to uh, get 11 guys around the ball um, before you can stop the frame in the film room. So I think we do that. You see it in pictures and things like that just by watching highlight reels that we get all 11 guys to the ball every play. We hear you guys preach that 111 thing. Yeah. Now, you and Will Say are both out of this ball game. How are you guys filling the voids defensively? You know, I think that uh, goes back to the system the coaches have in place. Uh, we rotate guys like crazy every game. Um, we don't really have starters, and if we do, they play for a series, come out, uh, take a couple breaths, and then they're back in. So we, we have a system full of rotation. Um, we're rotating guys. We have um, guys who haven't even played line, linebacker before going down there today, so it'll be cool to see. All right, thank you very much, yeah, Alex. Yeah. Thank you for coming on. All right, now going back over to the offensive side of the football, that triple threat of Stanek, Tassio, and Kukoc came to play once again in those last three quarters last week. Yeah. Six combined touchdowns between the three of them. And here's Coach Thorne talking more about how they use that wildcat formation to utilize their offense. Jordan is the perfect guy to, uh, to be able to make that thing work, and he's had a heck of a game and a heck of a season in terms of short yardage, but – now his yards per carry, again, you got to be really unselfish. <laughs> so they're way down because he's been in, and you know, we've been in, uh, you know, the wildcat on almost every one of our short yard situations. Now, over to Russ to start off with. Uh, he has the whiteboard out right now, going to yeah. tell us how this yeah. offense utilizes these three players to get the optimum performance. Yeah, now Spencer Stanek's going to be obviously your quarterback, so he's going to be, if you're if you're listening on the radio right now, looking from 
up the up the down to up is going to be the offense. So Spencer Stanton can be your quarterback behind center in the gun almost every single play. Now what North Central likes to do is spread the field, kind of get Spencer Stank an opportunity to get the, where the defense wants to go and kind of get them what coverage they're going to be in. Um, and then you have Jordan Tassio and then also Nick Kukoc. Now either they'll rotate, you can also go to Wildcat with Jordan Tassio at quarterback and then Nick Kukoc at running back. But what they want to do is basically when they're in that Wildcat, you really want to kind of spread it out and then see they give Jordan Tassio the option to hand it off or keep it. Uh, Jordan Tessio doesn't throw that much, so when you're almost in a Wildcat, it's going to be a guaranteed run unless they do a little kind of Tim Tebow style um, offense. So basically what we're going to see here is, is for Spencer Stanick, uh, he's going to be in the gun here, and they're going to have two receivers if they're going to run the ball. We'll say Kukoc is at the running back position on the bottom left side or right side of the whiteboard. And we're going to have two wide receivers usually spread the field out and usually go towards the sideline with a post. Either way, now you're going to have one receiver to the near side and two to the far side of the field. And either way, most receivers will go out towards the field and they'll have one safety receiver that comes cross back towards the middle of the field. Now usually what they want to do with this is they're going to spread the ball out. You mostly try to get as many people out of the box as possible for Nick Kukoc when he runs in between the tackles. But the thing about Nick Kukoc, you can put him in any situation and he'll run it in between the tackles or he'll run it outside. What Nick Kukoc does best though is that he'll take it inside first and then bounce it outside and he's so powerful with his legs and keeps his legs running that it's, it's so hard for someone to bring him down. Either way. And then when it comes to Spencer Stanick, he's so good at reading the coverages. If they're in a cover one shell, a cover two shell, even a couple th cover three, dime package, no matter what the defense is, Spencer Stanick's able to sniff it out and kind of call the audibles at the line of scrimmage, which he does well as a quarterback. He's able to read the coverages and kind of change the plays as he goes. And Russ showing that cover one shell on this yes, whiteboard because that's shell. what Wesleyan will most likely yes. be in in this ball game for most of the game. Now going back over to you, Bobby. How much pressure does it take off of quarterback Spencer Stanick knowing A, that that wildcat formation is in place for Jordan Tassio, and B, just knowing that Kukoc and Tassio are in the backfield? Oh, it's huge, uh, Jeremy. I mean, if you have two, you know, beastly running backs, you know, looking at last week's game, Tassio with 56 yards, three touchdowns, and Kukoc with 129 yards and a touchdown, that's huge. But I think this is going to be their true test today against Illinois Wesleyan. This is their first real test. And I think for them, they're going to have to, and Stanek is going to have to establish a passing game. I think for the Cardinals to make a deep run in the playoffs, they're going to have to be a balanced offense. But it, it does certainly take a lot of pressure off it because if he's not on his best game and you have two running backs that are incapable of carrying a game, it obviously takes pressure off him. Uh, and uh, going over the turnovers now, that's one thing that's been a problem for this North Central team. We talk up the offense, yeah. how good they are. But – they've had trouble holding on to the football. We saw in that first game against lacrosse, six turnovers. That is why they lost that football game. Yeah, and yeah. they only lost by four points. Then you go against Redlands, they had two. Against Stout, they had three. And then they had two last week against Carthage. They've had at least two turnovers in four of their game, seven games this season. Now, Bobby, can the Cardinals continue to turn the ball over and A, win the conference, and or B, make a deep run in the playoffs? No, and any football team will know that you turn the ball over, that limits your chances a lot to win a football game. This conference is very winnable, and the Cardinals are arguably the favorite to win this conference. But if you look at making a run in the playoffs with the team, you know, they lost arguably a lot of starters last year. A lot of their talent, they say they were more talented last year. We weren't able to make a run last year when everyone thought we were. If they turn the ball over in the playoffs, they have no chance, and that's going to be the key, and that's kind of the key with any football team, Jeremy. Absolutely. Now, Russ, going over to you now, um, the turnover problems, what can they do? to stop these turnover problems from happening because we we all agree they need to stop turning the ball over if they want to make a deep yeah. run this year i mean when it comes down it's come protecting the ball when you're a running back have three points of pressure on the ball top bottom and the middle point of the ball and then as a quarterback you have to be aware of your surroundings you have to realize if you're in a pocket there's going to be people coming around you and collapsing around you self-aware to be stepping up in the pocket spencer stank as a quarterback he hasn't really made one bad decision all year throwing the ball if anything it was the cross game but you can't really fault him for that first game of the season but we have had had trouble holding on to the ball as a running back core. Really what you want to do is, like I said, three points of ball, and then when you're getting tackled, cover up the ball, make sure it's in front of you and not off to the side. No one can punch it out. It, it just got to be strong with the ball handling skills. Absolutely. All right, we're going to take a two-minute timeout, but when we come back, we're going to preview the Illinois Wesleyan game here today, homecoming at Benedetti Worley Stadium. You listen to your Cardinal Countdown pregame show right here on WONC Sports. Back here from Benedetti Worley Stadium, it's homecoming here at North Central College. This is your Cardinal Countdown pregame show, bringing you right up to 30 minutes to game time. 
between Illinois Wesleyan and your North Central Cardinal College Cardinals. All right, let's talk about this game today, guys. We recapped the Carthage game. Now to today. The Titans come into this game ranked 20th by D3Football.com. They suffered their first loss last week against Wheaton, falling to the Thunder 38-33. to Bobby, let's start off with you. How do you expect Wesleyan to show up today after that huge loss last week? That's a good question, Jeremy. And I don't think anyone can really know how Wesleyan is going to show up today. Reason being, Rob Gaelic, their very good quarterback, came into this game throwing for almost 1,700 yards, completing almost 70% of his passes and having 18 touchdowns on the air. He's done for the year. They're relying on Tyler Hook, freshman, and uh, Terrell Bolden, who have not been established themselves. So that's going to be the key for Wesley, and you don't really know what you're going to get from them. I think they're going to have to play outstanding defense today because you're not going to look at a freshman like Hook and expect him to go off for 40 points. That's the key for them is they got to be able to play good defense and limit their turnovers. You touched on it, Bobby. They lost starting quarterback Rob Gaelic to an injury last week. Starting in, or playing in his place will be a combination of sophomore number seven Tyrell Bolden and freshman number 15 Tyler Hook. Hook will start, but there's something interesting about this Tyrell Bolden guy. Russ, yeah, let's talk about him. Tyrell Bolden really comes up big for this Illinois Wesleyan Titans football team. He plays cornerback. He'll kick return or he'll kick return, punt return. I mean, he kind of is the do-it-all guy for Illinois Wesleyan. But the thing is, that he they just don't really have like like Bobby and Jeremy, you guys were saying, an established backup quarterback. So it's going to be really interesting to see how they translate from a, a, a certified starter back to a kind of rotation, almost that you'll see in uh, college football sometimes at the beginning of the season. Well, no, this is happening right now, middle of the season, when it's grind time. You really got to go. Now, Bobby, what can North Central expect from this hook and Bolden combo, and how will Illinois Wesleyan utilize them? Well, I think you're going to see Bolden in a lot of, you know, running formations, a lot of Wildcat, like Russ was talking about. He actually he returns punts. He's, you know, he's got some speed. From Hook, you don't really know. And I don't think North Central knows what to expect in a way because they don't have, they haven't scouted them. They haven't been playing. You know, it's obviously been in the hands of Gaelic all year. So it's there's a lot of pressure on these two quarterbacks. And I think the key for North Central is you got to, you know, establish some pressure on them, make them you know, forced throws, forced turnovers. You know, that's going to be the key with, you know, a guy that's coming in in their first game. Absolutely. Now, one thing that's also interesting about them losing Rob Gaelic, like you said, Tyrell Bolden returns punts. I would not expect Tyrell Bolden to return punts today if, he, if they're expecting Definitely him not. to see time at quarterback. So that also hurts their return game. All right. Now, North Central and Illinois Wesleyan, two very successful programs as far as D3 football is concerned. Also, two programs with a lot of respect for one another. And actually, Shane Durking talked a little bit about the respect between these two programs. In fierce rivalries, you're always going to have a little chippiness, but it's two, two programs who pride themselves on being good sports. So I don't know if we'll see that this year, but um, I know one thing, it's going to be a great football game on Saturday. All right, Russ, over to you. Do you think it makes for a better game when you two ha when you have two programs who respect each other this much playing each other head-to-head? -head? Oh, easily. It's like a rivalry you'll never see before. I mean, two of these schools are some of the oldest schools in Illinois, and when it comes down to sports tradition, they have the biggest sports tradition by far that they can have in either sport. So when it comes down to getting up for a game like this, it's automatic. If you don't get up for this, I don't think you have a heart. Uh, I don't think you have any type of soul within you. So, yeah, this is going to be a big game for each team. The tradition is just unbelievable. All right, and over to you, Bobby. Illinois Wesleyan, Coach Thorne's alma mater. What do you think goes through his mind when he sees that green and white on the other side of the field? Oh, it's got to be really emotional for him. And I know Coach Thorne, and I'm sure he's just treating it to his players like it's just any other game, any other conference game that is winnable. But, you know, deep down, he's feeling it. He wants to win this game. I know that for a fact he's probably got this game circled on the schedule every year. This is one game he wants to win, and they've done that. They're, they've nine nine and one in their last ten games against Illinois Wesleyan. That's how you know Coach Thorne gets his guys prepped for this game. That only lost back in 2009. Now, moving over to North Central, the Cardinals come into this game ranked ninth by D3Football.com. They are coming to this game riding a six-game win streak. But, Bobby, what will make today's game more difficult, both on the offensive and defensive side of the ball, than their previous seven for North Central? Well, starting with the offense, you look at, you know, they've lit up the scoreboard. That's going to be difficult today with the Illinois Wesleyan defense, who's allowing under 200 yards passing a game and under 100 yards rushing game. That's their strong suit. They're able to stop the run. They're only, like I said earlier, I touched on less than three yards average per carry. That's something that is difficult when you look into for the North Central. You gotta be able to establish a balanced offense, I think. You have to be able to throw the ball when they're expecting a run, and I think you have to be able to run when they're expecting pass. I think just, you know, obviously, you know, spreading it out. Now on the defensive side, you look at, you know, Gaelic being out. They have hook under center, freshman. 
you got to put some pressure on him. You know, make him force some throws. There's nothing more. You know, he's feeling the nerves today. Coming into North Central Benedetti Worley Stadium in their homecoming game, both teams at, you know, top of their conference, they need to win this game, and he's going to feel the nerves. If they're able to put some pressure on him, force some turnovers, look out for the Cardinals in this one. Now we actually, Jared Schlensky caught up with Spencer Stanick, who talked a little bit about what North Central is going to have to do in this ball game to beat Illinois Wesleyan. I just think, um, like usual, I just need to go in there, um, you know, the positive attitude and just do what I know I can do on the field. Um, and as long as, as long as our offense executes, we'll be, I think we'll be fine because we've got a great defense behind us. Now, Russ, we talked about what North Central needs to, needs to worry about in this ballgame. But over to you. What gives North Central the edge in this ballgame? I honestly think the edge that North Central has is their offense and defensive line. I mean, every game is won in the trenches no matter what team you play for. Offensive line doesn't get the respect that they deserve no matter where you play. And also this defensive line, they get after it. They're a downhill type football team on the defensive line. So they're going to get after the quarterback no matter what. They're always, they're always going after quarterback first uh, and then playing the run second. But I honestly think this offensive line of uh, North Central is really going to have to come up big here and play to the secondary, play past the first level of the line of scrimmage and really get into this backfield of Illinois Wesleyan's defense. All right, now an inter interesting fact about this game. North Central quarterback Spencer, excuse me, Spencer Stanick, his little brother Eric yeah. is a defensive back for Illinois Wesleyan. And Jared Schlensky talked to Stanick a little bit about Stanick playing his little brother. Let's hear about it. It's going to be pretty wild playing against my brother. Um, no, I haven't played against him before because I'm three years older than him and he was on the same team as me in high school. And um, I think it's it's going to be a really, really cool experience, you know, having him out there going against him. Um, I mean, I know that I can't, you know, throw an interception to him or, oh, man, I'll never, never hear the end of that at family parties or anywhere, actually. So I just, you know, it's going to be fun. You know, I think... I might try and go at him a little bit, you know, throw it towards his side, but I think all in all it should be a good game. All right, now we broke down this game as much as we could. We recapped Carthage. Yeah. It comes down to this, guys. One key for North Central to win this ball game. We'll start with Bobby. One key. I'm going to go on the defensive side, and I'm going to go with the front seven, more, more towards the defensive line. I think with Tyler Hook coming in as a freshman quarterback, rookie, and a big game on the road, if you're able to put some pressure on him with the front four without having a blitz, so you've got guys dropped into coverage along with your front four getting pressure, it's going to be a long day for the Illinois Wesleyan quarterback, and if they're getting a lot of pressure on him, you're going to see some turnovers, and which will lead to a Cardinals win. All right, what about you, Russ? I'm going to tie two things into it together. I'm going to go with the offensive line of North Central, and I'm also going to go with the running backs at the same time. If the offensive line can't produce holes, it's going to be up to the uh, running backs in uh, North Central to recreate their own holes and kind of take control of the offensive line. But I don't expect that to happen. I expect the North Central offensive line to take control easy and uh, really get to the second level of Illinois Wesleyan and kind of create mayhem back there and really disorient Illinois Wesleyan. All right, we recapped Carthage, previewed this game. We're going to take a two-minute break. And when we come back, we'll make our picks, CCIW and D3 Top 25, and we'll finish it off with this game. You'll listen to your Cardinal Countdown pregame show right here on WONC Sports. Back here from Benedetti Worley Stadium, we got about five more minutes, and it's time, guys. We're going to make our picks. We're going to start off in the CCIW. First game we're going to break down, Milliken at Wheaton. This is an interesting matchup. I'm going to go Wheaton in this one, Jeremy. I like Wheaton at home. They are still in contention, and you know for that CCIW champ or championship. So I'm like liking Wheaton at home in this one. Russ, yeah, I think, think you disagree. Yeah, I, I, I beg to differ with you, Bobby, <laughs> right. on this one. Uh, Big Blue is going to rain down on Thunder, and uh, <laughs> Milliken is just going to take control of this Wheaton Thunder. And honestly, I think Milliken is going to have a coming out party today. They have so many good pieces and so many right places. It's just a matter of time before they really can exploit their offense and really get get going as an offensive unit. So, Big Blue taking down the Thunder. All right, this game has a lot of implications for Wheaton. This is a, this is basically a must-win game for them. Every game for Wheaton here on out is a must-win. Yeah. I think they'll play like that today. I think it'll be a very close game, but I think the Thunder will find a way to win this ball game. Good okay. pick. All right. Thank you, Jeffrey. The other game in the CC – well, okay, the other one of the other games in CCIW, <laughs> Elmhurst at North Park. Uh, we, do we even need a – I'm going North Park Yeah. this one. Okay, yeah, right. All right, nah, yeah, I don't think North Park has a chance of winning a game this year. <laughs> I don't know. Their double hip offense there is pretty intimidating. <laughs> so 
Uh, no, I'm going with, uh, for sure, Elmhurst. Elmhurst has a really good team this year. I mean, I know we played them and we kind of beat them pretty bad, but they got a running back that's just absolutely unbelievable. With so much speed, actually, homegrown here around the, the Naperville area in Downers Grove. So, uh, yeah, Elmhurst for sure. Or, yeah, Elmhurst for sure. All right, uh, CCIW game that may be a little more close than the yeah. Elmhurst North Park game. Uh, Carthage in the Quad Cities at Augustana. Who do you guys got? You know, what, listening and watching the game last week, I, in a way, North Central exploited them. I like Augustana in this one. Part of the reason is because I like the way they run their offense, and I think they have the home field advantage, which is going to be huge for them. So I'm going to go Augustana in this one. Uh, you know what? I'm going to go Augustana too. I think the home field advantage is going to be really huge for Augustana. Uh, they have good pieces again. There's another team that's right on the cusp of having really good contention for the CCIW. They just got to put it all together, and I think Augustana is going to do it today against Carthage. All right, last week, the North, this North Central offense got a first-hand account of just how good this Carthage defense is. Yes, North Central put up 42 points, but that's what North Central does. Yeah. Held scoreless in the first quarter. That Carthage defense had a lot to do with it. This defense is good. I think they can do enough on the offensive side of the ball to squeak out a victory. It'll be very close, maybe even overtime, but I think Carthage goes into the Quad Cities and beats Augustana. Even, even taking away your hometown team. Yeah, there? you know, I grew up going to Augustana games as a kid, but... Uh, you know, I gotta take Carthage in this one. All right. All right, now we're going moving over out of the CCIW into NCAA Division Three Top 25. Number 17 Heidelberg at number one Mount Union. Interesting fact about Mount Union: they're going for their seventh straight shutout. So I have two picks for you guys. Does Heidelberg go in and beat Mount Union? If not, does Mount Union get their seventh straight shutout? I'm saying no on the shutout, but I'm, there's no way I'm picking against Mount Union on this one. You know, you know as well as I do, one shutout is very impressive. Yep. That's impressive. Seven in a row is unheard of. I, there's no way I'm picking against Mount Union, but I think, you know, having to play a top 25 team yeah, this week, yeah. I'm not saying they're going to get their uh, next shutout. It's, they're going to win, but I'm saying no shutout today. What about you, yeah, I think Heidelberg's going to get the shutout today, actually. <laughs> uh, no, I'm joking. But, uh, no, I think, you know what, I do think Mount Union's going to win. I, you know what, I'm going to say it. They're going to get that shutout today. Uh, you know, I just went to school around Mount Union for about a half a year, and just the football players they have out there are, are unbelievable. And I just think too much winning tradition, uh, really well coached. Mount Union is going to get that shutout today. I, I have a feeling. So Mount Union for sure. All right, I got twenty-five dollars in my pocket. If either of you can tell me the last team to score on Mount Union. It's a doozy. Uh, is it Franklin? I, I told you this earlier. That doesn't even okay. That doesn't even count. All right, we're, I'm not giving you twenty-five dollars, but I'm gonna pick Mount Union as well. It'll probably be a blowout, maybe not a shutout, but I think the I think Mount Union will get the victory. All right, another interesting top twenty-five game. Number five Wesley having to go on the road at number sixteen Huntington. Yeah, I'm going Huntington in this one. I like their offense. I like the home field advantage this week. That's really been big on me this week. I'm going them just because I think they're gonna be come out fired up. So I'm gonna go with a little bit of an upset in this one. Yeah, I mean, I'm actually going to keep it with Wesley. Uh, Wesley has a really good quarterback in Tyler Lelly. Uh, he's a really good quarterback, has a rocket arm. Almost reminds me of Shane Falco of the replacements. I know I've seen that movie. But, uh, yeah, I'm going to go with Wesley for sure. Uh, just a quarterback play and the running back play of Wesley is just too hard, I think, for Huntington to handle. Yeah, Shane Durkin kind of reminds me of Rocky. You know, yeah. yeah uh, <laughs> no, I'm going to take Wesley on the road just because with Whitewater with those two losses, that really opens the door as far as the Division Three playoffs go. Wesley knows they have an opportunity to get a one seed. Yeah. I think they'll play, play like it today and squeak out a victory at Huntington. All right, speaking of UW-Whitewater, two losses this season, the yeah. defending national champs. If they lose one more, they can throw any chance of making the Division Three playoffs out the window. They play at UW-Stevens Point. For those of you that don't know UW-Stevens Point, one and six on the season. Um, does Whitewater blow it today? Uh, definitely not, Jeremy. I, I think that they have, you know, obviously coming off a national championship, that's a lot riding into you for the next year. They're having a tough season so far. They get it going today, I think, in a big fashion. They get a blowout, and they get back on track today with the win. I'm going to agree with Bobby. Yeah, I think Whitewater just – those kids out there in Whitewater, and if they lose today, you know how embarrassing they would get shunned from that community. Um, so I believe Whitewater is going to come out today in a big, big way. I honestly think they're going to put 50-plus points on the board against uh, Stevens Point. And finally, today's game right here, Benedetti Worley Stadium. I know we're all picking North Central. Uh -oh. That's no yeah. surprise. Correct. I want a score and a reason why. Start with you, Bobby. I'm going to go 31 17. The reason I'm picking the Cardinals in this one is, you know, obviously with Tyler Hook under center for the Titans, that's going to cause some problems. I think they're going to get to him defensively. They're not going to put up a lot of points today. But I think, you know, North Central has run the tables with, you know, scoring 40 every week. 
But Illinois Wesleyan has a very established defense. It's probably the strongest part of their team coming in this week. They're going to hold them to in the 30s, but I think they have so many talent, talented people on the offensive what side for North Central. It's going to be a little too much to handle for the Titans in this one. 31-17 Cardinals. What about you, Russ? Yeah, 42-28 Cardinals. And I believe the reason why we're going to score 42 points today is the play of the offensive line and Nick Cook coach and Jordan Tassio. Don't be surprised. I got a weird feeling. I'm, I'm known for going out there on a limb with my uh, statistics here, but I'm going to go Nick Cook coach is going to rush for about 125 yards and Jordan Tassio is going to pick up another 100 so we're going to go for 225 yards on the ground today for North Central. Even with them allowing only under 100, huh? Yeah, I, th nice. I think we're going to have a coming out party here for North Central. I feel like the offensive line, I, this is going to be the first time you guys are going to see full starters here for North Central on the offensive line. Uh, John Canova, I believe, is back today, usually starting center. So I, they have all pieces together to really have a huge breakout game today. All right. And, uh, you know, I'm going to pick North Central as well. I'm going to say 27-17. I think it'll be a close game. But like you said, that offense just too much and that defense playing out of their minds right yeah. now. It's the Cardinals. It's the Titans. It's homecoming right here at Benedetti Early Stadium. The crowd's packing in. Expect a great game. This has been your Cardinal Countdown pregame show. We're taking it back to the FM 89 studio with Jared Schlinski for your Cardinal pregame live. Go Cards. Go Cards, baby. Go Cards. <laughs>